All right, so today we're gonna to be starting our first official lesson. Now, I say official because the, all the lessons we've done already were kind of to prepare you for what we're going to be doing. They're kind of reviews, what you should have known before coming into the classroom. So now we're officially starting with chapter one, section one, which is solving simple equations. When we say simple, what we really mean is one step. One solving one step equations. We call these one step equations because you really just gotta do one step and then you're done. We're gonna start by talking about solving linear equations. by adding or subtracting. So all these problems we're about to do require you to add or subtract. No multiplying, no dividing, just adding or subtracting. Before we can actually talk about solving them though, I wanna talk about what an equation is. An equation is a statement that we're gonna say in this case two expressions are equal. So a, a statement that two expressions are equal. So we've already gone over what an expression is. An expression is made up of numbers, variables, and operations. So the expression was x plus two. Three minus y. Again, expression does not have an equal sign. Think of equation, you know, and the word equal. They're almost exactly the same, except, you know, there's no L. So an equation has to have an equal sign. So an example of an equation, seven x, seven, oh, seven minus x. Again, it's an expression equal to 2 plus y. So you have two expressions equal to each other. Or another one, 3d is equal to 8. Again, expressions equal to each other. So whenever I ask you what an expression is, you should be able to tell me what an expression is. Or if I ask you what an equation is, you should be able to tell me what is an equation. So since we're talking about solving simple equations, we wanna talk about when solving an equation, you will give what's called a solution. Your definition to solution, again, it's something you should be writing down. A solution is a value that makes an equation true. So a solution is a value that makes an equation true. Now, when we're dealing with these equations, all these equations are going to have a variable. As of right now, and for the rest of the year, we're only gonna be dealing with one variable. Well, when I say one variable, I mean we're only gonna be dealing with one letter. So for example, the problems are just gonna have X's, or Y's, or Z's, but they're not gonna be X, Y, Z in one problem. Here's one of the most important things to solve an equation.
you must isolate the variable. So every problem we're going to be doing, there's going to be a variable in there and we got to isolate it. In other words, when we say isolate, we want to get it alone. The variable doesn't like other people, so we're going to get it alone, get it by itself. All right, so again, if you need to, pause the video so you can write down these notes. Again, this is what I'm looking for, because when you come in the next day, we'll, I'll answer any questions that you have, but if you did not watch the video, that is on you. Your goal is to watch the videos on your own, take notes, because again, there are gonna be assignments, and if you didn't watch the video, you probably won't be able to do the assignment. Now, along with knowing that when you're solving an equation, your goal is to isolate the variable, a couple other things you need to know. Oh, that marker doesn't work. Okay, that's marker's trash. A couple other things you need to know, and this is for every problem. Your variables must be positive. So for example, if your final answer is negative x equals three, it's not done because your x is negative. But if you had x equals three, then you see how the x is no longer a negative x, it's a positive x. So if you have a final answer like this, you are not done. And then to isolate a variable, you must use and this is what we call inverse operations. Now this video is probably going to be kind of probably going to be kind of long because again there's going to be a lot of vocab that you guys need to be paying attention to. So inverse operations. Here's a definition. An inverse operation or inverse operations. are two operations, it's crazy, right? We're at operation in the definition. Two operations that undo each other. Oops, sorry. Are two operations that undo each other. Think about, for example, you did some work and then someone destroys it. All the work you just did was undone by the person who came and destroyed it. So think that you created it, someone destroyed it. So destroying something undoes the creating or vice versa. I know that might sound weird, but, and we're talking about math and talking about creating and destroying, but examples, we're talking about two operations. For example, addition and subtraction are inverse operations of each other. Multiplying and dividing are inverse operations of each other. These are the key ones you're gonna to need to always want to know. Which ones are the inverse operations? We also have a couple of properties. So we've already talked about the distributive property. Now we're going to talk about I'm making, I'm making sure I spell right because you know my spelling is horrible. I teach math, not English. 
right? Addition. We're gonna go ahead and talk about both of these. Addition and subtraction. I feel like that's misspelled for some reason. So addition and subtraction property of equality. You're like, well, I've never heard this before. I don't know what that is. Or if you have heard about it, that's great. All this prop, all these, all of them, well, what these two properties are telling me is that when we go to solve equations, what this is telling me, I'm going to write it down first and then we'll talk about it because it might make sense afterwards. And if I say it right now, it might not. So, in the simplest way of saying it, what you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other. So, for example, if I go and what I need to do is I got to add 3 to the left side of the equal sign. Well, since I added 3 to the left side, I need to go and add 3 to the right side to keep them equal, to keep them equivalent. So that's what these properties are saying. So for example, if I add, if I subtract five from one side, the subtraction property of equality tells me that I need to go and subtract the same number on the other side. That is what we are doing.